Hey folks, welcome. Today we're not touching Blender. We're going to be doing a portfolio review. So I put out a call a couple of weeks ago on Discord, Twitter, YouTube, asking people for their portfolios. So I managed to get this whole list of portfolios. We're not going to go through them all today. I've just picked a good kind of cross section. Hopefully we're going to do these more in the future, but let me know down in the description if you like this kind of format, if you think it's useful, if you think it's interesting, if you want me to look at yours as well, then feel free to send over your portfolio, either a DM or you can drop your links down in the comments below. Let's start off here by just clearing up what is a portfolio. A lot of people put a lot of work out there and as 3d artist i think that's really important you know having your instagram presence your twitter presence being in the space in professional forums talking to people and making yourself known My name is Jeff. that is very good common practice as a 3d artist in this space however for a portfolio this should be a curated subset of your work that shows you in the best light to do the thing that you most want to get employed for and this should be something that you are happy at the drop of a hat to send to a hiring manager. And I think that kind of differentiates itself slightly from people who are using Instagram perhaps to just show all of their work as they do it chronologically. You know, some people use ArtStation as well in this way. I would not call that a portfolio because it is not curated. I think the order of things in a portfolio doesn't need to be chronological. A portfolio should be you curating the work. You should make sure that people see it in a specific order and this is how we would do it with um, like traditional portfolios when you'd print stuff off and take it in in a book. You would think about that user experience as they were turning through to make sure that that experience starts really high. If there is gonna be a lull, make sure it's in the middle, finish really high, make sure you have continuity of themes, projects, things that you can talk about. So two things there. One, don't put everything on there. Two, doesn't have to be chronological. Just one note though, when you are taking things out of chronological order, um, be wary of putting in work that is very old, like four, five, six years old. If you are putting in work that is that old, unless it is exceptionally good, I would probably replace it. The speed that the software updates and the rate at which you're creating work, hopefully, should mean that you're able to just produce something new or have something in your back pocket that you can replace with that is just a little bit more recent. The work in your portfolio should be work that represents you the best. So I would say just have this really tight, distilled portfolio where each item is a whole post as much as you can. Don't just do a single image, do a whole post. Make sure you write it up, say where it's from. If you've used references, either include them, which is a good practice, or link to the references that you used. Um, and I'm saying this like if you've modeled somebody else's design, it's important to credit that person or credit that you've used AI to generate whatever concepts it is. I'm gonna be viewing these portfolios with three main metrics. For kind of marking the work. Uh, we're going to be looking at talent, discipline, and professionalism. These are the three things that you should be uh, viewing your own portfolio through. This is the lens that you should look through. Talent meaning how well can you use the tools. On top of this, I'm going to want to see discipline. So I want to know that you not only can do things, but that you will push yourself through all of these little bits that you don't necessarily want to do, or that are ancillary to the main thing. And then there's professionalism. So this is like, where do you draw the line for when you're happy to hand off on something? And that's not just in the quality of the modeling. This is more to do with your presentation. So it's having all of those different textures visible. It's having all the wireframe. It's having the turntable. It's having the sketchfab in bed if you want to like really give people the ability to look around a model. So talent, discipline, professionalism. These are the things that you should be grading yourself by, essentially. Let's jump into our first candidate. We're going to be looking at Anton Myshenko. This is a Ukrainian artist working in Kiev. So first one, an old project. I like this finalized an old project based on an amazing concept by Konstantin Kokas. This is neat. So this is the original painting. I like that we have an actual reference here. Nice work as well. It's not a reimagining. It is just working pretty directly. But I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I like the texturing, I like the presentation, but this is just in blank space, which to be fair, so is their original concept. But I just think that there would be something nice about seeing this in some kind of context. I know that that's a bit more work. You gotta think about like how you wanna dress it, how you wanna pose it. I like this, I like the sculpted fabric. I like the texturing. I think personally, I would want to see something a little bit more characterful in the drawers. These are just 
packed in real tight. I would like to see these a little bit more dynamic. And I think as well, like even if you're working on somebody's concept, I think you kind of owe it to yourself to do a little bit of reimagining. It's not going to offend the person whose concept it was. This is your portfolio. But also good to see that you can hold to a drawing. This is fun, a little bit more kind of pushing that stylized look. Uh, we've got no wireframes, we've got no turntables, we've got no texture maps. Those things are not necessarily requirements, but especially something like this that is very like game looking might be cool to include those things. And it doesn't really, doesn't take much time. Let's carry on here, cup of cookware. See when these were uploaded. So these were six months ago, okay. That's not too bad. And I also like to see the different software used. So here we go. These are nice. I really like the modeling, but I want to know, you know, I want to know, is this, uh, is this textured? Is this like a little skirt that you've got on around here? You know, I can't tell that it's not. You've got these chips around the neck here. Is this sculpted? Is this sculpted? Is it all, you know, is this 50 million polys? I can't really tell. I'm just going to have to guess that it's not. Make sure that you show me that it's not. You can see that they're on here. This is gorgeous, by the way, just in terms of the design. Hugely inspired by Decagon artwork, artworks. I personally as well, I would like to see a little bit more write-up. You're relying a lot on me just looking at the pictures and being like, yeah, that's nice. Very cool design. Mirrored handles. I'm not sure that these would have been mirrored. Um, like the turn on these handles. I think these would be made standard with a mold. So I don't necessarily, I could definitely be wrong about that, but I don't think that the left-hand ones would be mirrored to the right, but it's such a nice bit of texturing, like the patina that's kind of been re, repainted over. See that these are just normal maps. Nice camera angles. I think your patina, your normal map is a bit too strong on the top here, but I like the colors. I think I'd like to see a little bit more burnt on grease and oil darkness around here. It's those kettles again, really gorgeous. Here we go, here's a nice little wireframe. So this whole top section was like baked down normal maps from another model. It looks amazing, but I would really like to see like, what was your process? How did you bake this down? Where was this from? Did you like meticulously sculpt all of this? Show me how you got to here. This is a really nice low poly baked down model with good normals. It's a solid model, but I want to see a little bit more about the journey to get here. So here's a cool project and a little bit more of a write up, which I enjoy. So telling us that you've been working on this for a few months, especially if you're a student, especially if you're early in your career, tell us how long you've been working on different projects because what might take somebody a week in practice in like in production could potentially take a student, you know, like six months, just make sure that you're, you know, you're authentic and you're honest, because I think that's really important. So let's just have a look down through some of these pictures. A couple of things are really jumping out at me immediately. But overall, this is very beautiful. You know, this looks very professional. The presentation the way that we've got these individual highlighted elements showing a little bit of extra detail, not a huge amount here. You could have a little bit extra. Uh, for example, on these columns, are these sculpted? Are these modeled? Are these arrayed? Are they procedural? Uh, in this one, you've got this function that changes the tint based on position. These candles, these are what jump out to me, by the way. We're going to go up to the main one and have a look at them in a sec. Modules, this one's always tricky. If you've got arched roofs, you've got to really think about your brick directions. I know this was based on uh, Dark Souls, so they weren't exactly doing good brick directions in the game. So I'm thinking a lot of this stuff is just sculpted, basically sculpted and baked down. Nice little trim sheet. So here we go, we can see these are being baked down. Could have been optimized a little bit, especially on these columns. But I mean, this is fine. For what it is, this is fine. I wouldn't be too stressing about this. All under 10k. So, let's snip back up to the top. Let's just have a look at this video.
So just as we're coming along here, I think some of the camera pans could be a little bit slower. Like really just let us appreciate the moment. The camera definitely just feels a bit fast. And this is in Unreal as well. Like time to render could definitely just spend a bit longer on it. These candle drips, the detail resolution compared to other things in the scene. This is one of the things which is very difficult to get right. And I'm definitely at fault for this as well in a lot of my own work. The scale of detailing in different areas invites the user to look at that resolution across the whole thing, which means that the smallest detail should be the smallest detail everywhere. So these are very high contrast candle drips. And because of your ambient occlusion and because of your high detail sculpting and whatever else on these candles, you've got a lot of fine, fine detail, you know, teeny tiny compared to my mouse. And then you look at the wall and you're looking at the wall in this resolution now, because this is what you've been told to look at it. So you have a little bit of a juxtaposition between these super fine details and uh, the rest of the scene, which is done to a slightly lower kind of detail resolution, just by virtue of the fact that it's an entire interior. Another thing which actually really jumps out at me is just here. I know this is behind fog, but these gates look less detailed. Like these central uh, styles, the verticals, they look just kind of rectangular. And at the same time, I've got these high contrast drips going on. I've got all of this texture sitting around. There's a lot of very fine detail, especially on those, uh, the feathers and the wings. You know, there's this real mix of stuff that you just, you kind of want to guide your viewers eye a little bit. And, and also the other thing here, lighting, illumination, you've got quite a bright sky, um, bright enough for you to have this kind of cast light coming through. I think I would darken the sky slightly and I would increase the contrast inside a lot. You're going to catch a lot of the relief still with these candle lights, but I think just dim them down slightly, make your darks darker, and just make sure that this cast of light coming through is just a little bit stronger, a little bit more dramatic. But overall, this is beautiful work. This is great. And just really nicely presented as well. I think this is fantastic. The number of images you've included for this one and the detail of things like you've got the angel sculpt there, but then you also have your actual wireframes shown. So I really, I really like that. Lastly, we've got your material. So you've done a different post for the materials from that scene. And I think that is good practice because material workflow is definitely like fundamentally quite different to just straight up modeling and sculpting. So you're showing that you're doing like a really consistent bake here as your clay with that displacement. Here are just the base materials. Really nice, very substance designery. There we go, there's the graph. Very clean, we've got these reroutes, making sure everything is organized, we're keeping stuff in frames. This is great to see. I don't need to see the nodes themselves. It's not gonna be valuable for somebody in their portfolio to be like, oh, and you plugged the Perlin noise into the add node. That's not very useful. But seeing that you can organize in a way that, you know, if you were to give this to a team member, they would stand a chance to be able to follow and change and work on top of what you've done. That's really important. That's part of this kind of like procedural disciplined workflow, making sure that you are working in a professional pipeline. So that's it for this one. This is not too many images, but you don't need it. It's a couple of materials showing the node graphs, showing they're clean. Fantastic. I think this is great. So let's just roll back here just momentarily. Talent, discipline, professionalism. What do we think? Well, first of all, we've only got five things in our portfolio. This is not bad. Some people would be very scared to only have five things in their portfolio. I think having five things that are really good, five really solid examples of work that you do puts you in a good place because you've got the crypt, but then you have the crypt materials that you made for the crypt. And I appreciate that the crypt is a big project several months of work, multiple different softwares, and all to a high standard as well. So talent, fine, ticked you off immediately for talent. You're doing great. Discipline, um, 
you're pushing this stuff like far, you're doing all the extra stuff. Maybe with the fantasy table, we could have seen a little bit more individual voice. I think, you know, maybe you could have steered it a little bit more towards where you like. Um, but at the same time, it's an honest representation of the concept image. Uh, and that is a strength as well. So your talent is amazing. Your discipline is up there. You're doing the full scenes. You're doing a lot of work in very minute detail, uh, which is fantastic. And your professionalism, generally speaking, is actually pretty high. Like, you have a good presentation. You sent me the official portfolio version. So Anton, thanks for sending this in. I think you're doing great. I would just like to see more of your work to this standard. Next up, we have got Eva. Uh, she is a self-taught artist from Poland using Blender, Substance, After Effects, Photoshop, and you are working as a senior 3D artist. So props to you for being employed and self-taught. I think that's fantastic. Let's have a look at some of your work here. So first thing, I got stuck on that carousel. Like as soon as you're off that first image, you lose the link to everything. <laughs> I know that's not your fault, but that is just something to be aware of. All right, cool range of work. And again, we're not looking at too much stuff here. We're just looking at a nice, good quality subsection of their work. It's a portfolio for professional employment. I always feel like I want to look at people's worst work because I see a lot of amazing stuff like on Instagram and Twitter. You see a lot of cool stuff all the time. And I kind of want to just come in here and be like, okay, like what is the lightsaber project? Okay. So first of all, I feel like I'm being a bit unfair by doing this because I like intentionally am doing it. But something like this, I'm not sure it's doing you favors to keep it in your portfolio because a hiring manager goes into your portfolio and they can look for the things that jump out to them. And that's either because it's amazing or because it's like, huh, I wonder, I wonder what got through. So just something to be aware of. I'm going to go back. We're going to have a look at one of these more uh, detailed projects. Look at the jewelry box. Oh, this is gorgeous. Really nice detailing, really nice uh, presentation. We've got some definite processing going on. Masking in dust motes, and ISO grain, lovely texturing. I really like the detail that this is bent wood around the outside, I approve. This is nice, the stitching with the uneven ends. A lot of nice stuff in here. I kind of feel like it's almost too clean. Like we've got these scratches and we've got the wood texture with some scuffs, but it feels like it's been wiped down very recently. So this, is this a sculpt? There's a high resolution sculpt with some nice little scratch textures on it. That's gorgeous. Little differences in texture. I almost want to say it's like a scan or something like the quality of some of these bits is amazing. Oh, nice. Okay. So we're seeing the texture sets. This is really good. Make sure that you're showing a range of the technical elements that are included. Jewelry box about the previous project using Blender, Substance and Photoshop. Nice stuff. Let's have a look at this breakdown. King Combi breakdown. Okay. This is great. I really love seeing a full write up in a project. Take me on the journey with you. Don't just rely on me looking at pictures and having that emotional response. Get me engaged with your words. You have this opportunity to write a little bit of a blurb about everything that you put out. And this level is totally fine. It's not an intimidating wall of text, but it does show the work, show the thinking, show the things that you can't necessarily just show somebody in an image. Here we go. So range of the smaller props and showing how you're building up these textures. So nice. This is in painter. It's a nice little turntables on here. Just showing off the work. Uh, maybe a little bit too fast on the turntable, but it's nice high quality. So it, you get away with it. This is nice as well. Look at this texturing on here. Nice bit of patina. Nice, like a good sense of where damage is. Good use of references as well. Like 
you did not just invent this out the top of your head. You've looked at a lot of things. I would say that that's shiny. Slightly too shiny. I'm like, I'm nitpicking here, but... These are just very cool though. Very cool props. We're still not down to the actual vehicle. Okay, showing some process. Fantastic. Yeah, do show process. Like, don't shy away from letting people see your sketches. I think it's really valuable to people to be able to see sketches. Your little blueprints. Your modeling. That's very cool. Cool concept. Really just like the whole subframe has changed over. Yeah, loving how you're building this up. And it's uh, it's kind of like, it's believable levels of detail as well. You're not getting anything which is just like crazy high detail. Although you do have ratchet straps with pin details. <laughs> but it's all kind of in keeping. I like that there is some mechanical detailing going on underneath, but not so much that you're just wasting time on it because you do not need a lot of details under here. UVs, your favorite part of the project, sure. <laughs> I like actually, oh, I just noticed these, these sections are text that you have saved out in Photoshop. I kind of dig that, like that is some extra detail. Let's you do your own formatting. Nice. Big thanks to the Twitter community for giving some feedback. So I think this is also really good just to be really transparent. Like you're engaged, you're taking part in community conversations, you're putting work out there to get feedback on. I think this is all part of that professionalism. Showing us your UVs. You're saying that this is the most relaxing part, which makes me think that you have done these manually. It's not necessarily a bad thing to do manual UVs, but this is not a small amount of work to do these what, like 10 new dim tiles. I'm not sure how I feel about having this level of time spent, but you know, it's a hero asset. So making sure that your seams are well positioned looks good. So fair play to you. Let's have a look at our taxel density. All pretty good, pretty consistent. No stretching. The actual density of the taxels is not necessarily a problem, but keeping everything nice and square does make it just a little bit cleaner when it comes to texturing. A well-organized scene, thank you very much. Here we go, different processes. Yeah, this is fantastic. Like, this is what we're saying about like professionalism, being able to put your work out there, getting feedback on it, showing the full process is like just straight up a tick to your talent and then a tick to your discipline for being able to push this project as far as you did, as many things going into it as you did. So I think this project is like such a good masterclass in how to present well. And what a cool project as well. Ultimately, you've got your scene here, showing a little bit of your procedural texturing. Oh, this is your uh, volumetric, sorry. Showing your wireframe, nice tie deformation, solid quad topology. Good stuff. Yeah, that like quad fill at the end of your round canister. Love it. Cool tires as well. Tires are not easy to make. And these front ones are super high poly. This is cool. I like the um, I like the white wireframe as well. I think more people should do the white wireframe overlay. Also, is a nice touch putting the finished image again at the bottom of the the story because you know, like one of these things, if it's like if it's a very compelling bit of write up that you've done as well, which I think you did, uh, combined with videos, process shots, uh, your initial like ideation exercise, all of that combined makes this into like a very compelling project making sure that by the time you get to the end you get to actually see it again rather than having to scroll all the way back up so yeah props for this this is a very cool project and a very cool presentation and i really love the post layout but if i have to push <laughs> which i don't um it would be cool to see this in some context it's so mad max i love it i'm going to look at one more of yours let's have a look at the skeletal desk breakdown again love to see it this is the reference collection so a lot of cool bits of information. These actually look like photographs of a specific one. They're all the same. 
A lot of cool stuff going on here. I would probably look for some additional references. Like, I know that you're probably trying to make this one specifically, but you could start having a little bit of your kind of your own personal creative voice coming through. So it could be cool to, you know, just have a little bit more breadth of, uh, of references. So key point here was to push your texturing skills. So obviously you have to model it, um, but the modeling itself is not particularly complicated. Although I am interested in your topology on these cogs. <laughs> cogs can be really hellish. Nice braided strap. I wonder if you're going to show how you did this. Because there's a lot of different ways to do braids. It would be interesting to see how you did it. I'm assuming it's just kind of like an array along a curve in this case. Very cool. Modeling is gorgeous. Top work on this. Oh, okay. Here we go. Having a look at how, how to make the strands that we've got. Okay, nice. Yeah, so it's it's two helixes, three helixes wrapped around each other and then wrapped around another another curve. Nice. Well deciphered, because this is not clear how this works. Great stuff. And I love that your like your personality is coming through here as well. You don't have to be super rigid and like professional voice on a portfolio you can be a little bit playful and you're gonna be honestly just a lot more compelling to whoever is reading your work nice that we can see your triangles your proper scene statistics such clean uvs as well my god here we go taking it into substance so this is the main reason that she was doing this work right it was because of the texture painting stuff because of wanting to like really get into making all of that fine detail. So this is where we're going to start getting a bit more exciting. This is fun. This <laughs> this is the low poly shrink wrapped cord. Nice. This is fantastic. Great work. Nice stuff on here. Nice to see your dense topology on here. Sometimes you can't really get around it, but these screw heads are very dense. But there is a low and a high poly version. Really love this texturing. I think your job of painting in these graphics is fantastic. Really like the loss of detail in some of these where they become more worn. Yeah, the topology. You just can't really get around high topology with cogs. There's a few things you can do for terminating edges. Uh, just to kind of like reduce density on the teeth. But this looks good. Very tidy properly meeting teeth as well. I wonder if these were generated with the, the extra objects in Blender. Nice graphics. I wonder where you got this from. And again, finishing on the actual render. I almost want to see the actual final render alongside some of your references. Let's have a look back up to the top here. It's so detailed. Um, I can definitely see why you chose to do this one. And I think you did a fantastic job of the materials and everything. Like the modeling is fantastic. The problem solving with the spline, great job with that. I think it actually came out really good doing this. Uh, so because that cord was so high poly, doing that shrink wrap cylinder works really well. And you're right, you don't see it at all. Amazing. So let's go back here and rate your portfolio. So we're looking at talent, discipline, professionalism. How are we rating this? Really high. <laughs> really good. So your talent is unquestionable. You have got some just incredible work in here. And your discipline is also very clear. Like, you basically did this skeletal phone as a flex. You just did it because you wanted to show off your ability to do like super fine detail, complex problem solving, amazing texturing, and just being interested in cool stuff. Like, I think that that is just such a strong project. And fantastic that you've put it in your portfolio right up at the top here. Uh, and again as well for the king combi character stuff also excellent this excellent this is excellent i would say however you get some weaker stuff coming down here and it's not that it's bad it's just that you're competing with yourself and when somebody is very limited in their attention for like what they're going to click on this stuff is super dramatic and you're almost guaranteeing that people are going to click on this almost and i think you just want to make sure that people are not going to be clicking on the things that you're like, oh, if they only click on this one, would I be happy? Or would it be better to just have like these 10 
plus maybe a couple extra? That is the question you've got to ask yourself. Food for thought, but I think your portfolio in terms of talent, 100% yes, you're doing amazing and your modeling skills and your texturing skills are fantastic. Your discipline for doing the work and doing all of the bits of the work. You're not leaving blank spots other than in the places that you're allowed to. Your technical ability and your eye for detail and your hand skill are excellent. Your professionalism is excellent. The way that you're presenting these as a story, I think is super compelling. And I think that that gets me much more on board with you than just a project which has much less writing about it. You have a few images on here, a little bit of text, but I'm not engaged in the same way that I am when I see your longer format text breakdowns and I can actually see like your whole process and your whole workflow and just kind of get a bit of a sense of your voice as an individual. And I think that comes across really well in your work here. All right, we've got time for one more. Next on the chopping block, we've got Jeppe. This is a very cool selection of work. And I think this is the right amount of work. So thank you for sending in your portfolio. I'm specifically going to look at one project here, but before I do, I'm also going to have a look at another one just because I think the way that you present your work is worth learning from because it is concise. So this is only two images, but we have a nice big write up on the side here and a little bit of an exploration about what is going on here. Now, this is totally different to the point of Eva's work. So in Eva's work, it was like a full breakdown of the full process with everything fully exposed. This one is like, here is a cool piece of art I made, the workflow, I can show you the behind the scenes. And then the write up is actually majority law. So I think this one's fantastic from their own fantasy world building project at Tonin, uh, made together with their good friend Simon. So both of you are doing amazing. This looks fantastic. And I love that there's a bit of lore and I love that you're sharing your mirror board. So I just wanted to peek into this one because I think it's excellent. But the project that we're interested in is the city of Volker because this is geometry nodes. So this is the one that they sent me directly rather than the whole project. So this is geometry nodes and we're going to explore what that means in a minute. But look at the way that they're presenting this. There's a lot of painting going on around the outside of this render that is like when you look at it, you don't really see anything, but all of your eyes attention is here. You're not aware of anything missing in the background. You just see it as coastal. First of all, we've got a little header. Nice, nice touch. Uh, so the city was made primarily to learn geometry nodes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> a baptism by fire and again this is part of your personal project so we're seeing that dedication and discipline coming through there very cool love the boats as well these are fantastic a little bit of law in the middle here which is great and then we're straight into the technical stuff so we're seeing how all of this is constructed, which is great. You can see this is fully procedural, modular system being attached onto splines and formed along them. So you can see how this is working for them. Tools like this really speed you up. And I love that he's calling himself a technical concept artist, not just concept artist, but really creating these tools. I love seeing these videos. I think they're fantastic just for really demonstrating the value of your tooling, the speed that you're able to achieve a building like this. And I fully appreciate that this comes after many hours of exploration and testing and just making sure that the product that you're making works and building all of these modules. But as soon as you have it, as soon as you have this system, how do you present procedural work? I think this is a really compelling view of how to do that. Obviously it is completely different depending on the tools that you've made. However, many of the tools that you're making are for production, right? The valuable tools that you're making are for production. If you're a procedural artist trying to get a job, then you're trying to make tools for production. A lot of these tools can be used in ways that are quite visual because they're gonna be used by artists. So if you can demonstrate them in use by artists, then that is a very powerful thing. So with a project like this, especially as it's their sort of their learning geometry nodes project, the emphasis is not necessarily on demonstrating how amazing they are at geometry nodes, but rather to demonstrate how useful geometry nodes can be 
in this context. What I would have liked to see as a procedural artist, as somebody who's interested in nodes, is a little bit more of a breakdown, like maybe even just a click through of a node graph. Like seeing how you lay out nodes, seeing them with reroutes and frames to make sure that it's all commented nicely, and then just a simple click through of all the different sections to show how it all builds up. But I'm really nitpicking it. I think this is just, I think it's so exciting to see projects like this because they are one personal projects, so it just shows that somebody can really have a creative vision and then just make it. Like, what a amazing reason to be a, a visual artist. But also just the technical side of it. I do want to see a little bit more of the specifics about how you're building with geometry nodes, but even just seeing the use of these tools, I think that's very compelling. And again, this is one of those things that it would really come out during an interview that you would see like, oh, okay, this is how this is being used. Give me a demo in Blender, let's open this up and let's have a play together. That's the kind of stuff that comes in in like the next part of the process. So again, talent, discipline, professionalism, where are we standing? Well, talent, I mean, this stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> Your whole portfolio is amazing. Like some of these other projects, I'm just showing as well like 3D modeling and sculpting with paint overs in here. And just kind of like comp and design. And again, this is another personal piece. And it doesn't seem to be related to your other project. So again, this is just like more discipline, more about realizing your own passions. For me to feel so compelled and so inspired by looking at somebody's portfolio, that's what you want to give somebody when you give them a portfolio, is they should walk away from it being like, oh, I want to go make stuff. Because this is you sharing this stuff with the world and being like, this is incredible. This is the best I can do. I think I'd like to see a little bit more about your process, to be honest, like the work is extremely compelling and the backstory is compelling, like all of this stuff about the uh, the law. And maybe it's not interesting to you or you wouldn't think it was interesting, but even just like a few sentences under each one of these being like, oh, if you look over in this section over here, you'll see these things that were made in this way. I want to know how you did your town layout. How much of this is grid based? How much of this is procedural? How much of it is hand placed? How many of these buildings are being produced by geometry nodes versus just modeled by hand? And I also want to see like the technical side, like how clean are you working in your node graphs? How clean is your scene management if we're going to get into that side of things? So what are the key takeaways from today? When you're building a portfolio, it is a limited curated subset of your work. It does not need to be in chronological order. And I would expect it to be from within the last two to three years. Don't want to see stuff in there from like eight years ago, unless you've, I don't know, like done the title screen for Harry Potter. Like if it's that kind of thing, leave it in there. But generally speaking, if it's just personal projects, let's keep this as like a rolling cycle of a couple of years. When it's technical work, show the technical side of it. We want to see your process. Like don't just show the results of the assets show your process. I think Eva did an amazing job of really getting the viewer on board with her thought process, getting her on board with how she's structuring the projects and how she's using references, how she's using different softwares, showing us a little bit of those interfaces and how they're actually being used, framed in a really nice way as well. So overall, I mean, we've seen three incredible portfolios today. This has been a different kind of session, but hopefully an enjoyable and interesting one. Check out the description below for all of the links to our three candidates today. And if you want to see more of this kind of video, or if you have suggestions for how to improve and make them more engaging, maybe we'll do some live ones. Maybe we'll jump in a call with artists and have a bit of back and forth, do them as an interview. Let me know down in the comments as well. It's great to hear your feedback. As always, hope you've had fun, hope you've learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.